Yeah, hey, Matt, how are you? Good. Sorry, right, I was just watching the last play over again. Uh, walk us through the last play. What, what, what was uh, – that was obviously what you wanted, but why did you go with that? Yeah, there was a couple options out of it. The one option got nullified because there was a scrum in the middle of the court. Um, got stuck on each other, yeah. Yeah, it just held us. And uh, we were trying to move. And um, it's not really worth talking about just because it's – you don't want to talk about plays and other options and stuff like that when you don't run them and you save them for, for certain times. But um, that was the option at the end um, of him just stepping right into that area after a lot of different screens and cuts. And, so it was uh, a breakdown so, then? No, no. No. But there was just another option to the play that you couldn't see because we were being held. Go back and watch it. You'll see it. Um. What can this win do for your team? You know, just a good road win, you know, for us. You know, obviously we didn't, we didn't shoot the ball well. Um, we didn't play well in the first half. We had, we had too many breakdowns. Um, but just any time you can kind of figure out a way to win, uh, no matter how ugly it is, you know, you're just hoping it can build confidence for your team, um, especially, you know, like a program like Michigan State. You know, obviously, you know, being able to win a game here, and I know there's no fans, but um, they were pretty – good on the defensive end in the first half, just like they were pretty good defensively against Rutgers. So um, just our guys showing some intestinal fortitude to be able to flip it on them a little bit and play better defense ourselves. And then I thought Travion just had a great game. And, uh, but, you know, our inability to make a shot, you know, made it really hard at times, made it really hard. Um, it, but it, it's, it's one of those games where we found a way and hopefully we can build off. Did something loosen up in the second half where the, the offense functioned a little better? Well, I, you know, we made a couple more shots. You know, and Travion was able to score down low. And um, I think that was about it. Because if you go look at our, you know, Zach was three for five, and, you know, and Travion shot well from the field, but nobody else shot well. So it was like, it, it was really hard, uh, you know, to find a basket here and there. You know, it was really hard to know who to play, to be honest with you. But I thought the guys that did play, played hard, even though we didn't make a shot, you know, when you're struggling to, sh when you're playing good defense and, and your offense is, is, is a click and like, it's, it's one of those things where you just kind of stick with it because nobody's, you know, making shots and it was, but it's, it's still a difficult thing as a coach is like, am I, am I doing the right thing? And, you know, and who I'm sticking with because no one's proven, well, at least in this game, that they could knock out a shot. Right. Right. Did your team do something better defensively? Uh, I know it wasn't necessarily bad in the first half, but you got so many turnovers in the second half. I know a lot of those were probably on, on Michigan State, but did something click more defensively in the second half? No, just trying to keep them out of the paint, you know, and then trying to keep them out of transition and keep them off the glass and um, just make them score over us to the best of our ability. And that was just – that's what we tried to do more in the first half. There was times we had success. Um, keep them out of the middle of the floor. And, uh, you know, just make it hard, make it difficult on them. And, uh, you know, I thought we did a little bit better job in the second half, even though at the end we started to foul again. And uh, we wanted to, you know, try to keep them off the line. Are you starting to see Travion maybe go to that level of consistency um, you've wanted from him? This is three games in a row now on the road. He's been pretty good against pretty good big guys. Well, I, you know, trying to get him to start off a game, you know, I, I think that's, um, the piece that we try to do is, is, is try to go to those guys early and kind of see how people are guarding them, see what they're doing. Against Illinois, you know, he gets hit a couple times. He doesn't, you know, get those plays to go down for him. It just never got established. And also in the second half, we have a, you know, really good run to start um, the second half and uh, did some really good things there. But just trying to get him established as early as possible and then be consistent. I know he's had number-wise some games. And the one thing is – with talented guys is like their gauge isn't the other people on the team, like their gauge is themselves. Right. And so like, he's a talented guy, you know, he can pass, he can rebound, he can score with his back to the basket. And so just trying to get him to make work harder. So his so his job is easier. Um, don't try to make things difficult. You know, don't try to catch the ball at 15 feet, catch the ball at seven feet, you know, you know, work the guy inside. Um, on box outs, things of that nature, just trying to get him to be detail oriented. Because when he is and he gets good position, you know, he's tough to handle. And, 
you know, he made some free throws down the stretch for us. I know he missed that one, but, um, you know, he, he came up big for us tonight. There's no doubt about that. Have you ever had a substitution pay off that much that quick as, as no. you did with Zach? No, like, you know, just the whole thing that happened in terms of getting the steal that Eric Hunter and Brandon did a good job at the nine. Normally we're terrible at the nine right there. You know, we're not a pressing team. And so when we go and say, hey, don't let them catch, somebody lets them catch, you know, and, 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 and Brandon did not let Aaron Henry catch. And then Eric's the one that made that play. Yeah. They had to go to him, and then it went off of him. Um, and then the offensive rebound, you know, Mason and uh, Zach were very, very active, and obviously kept it alive and got that jump ball. Um, so, you know, just that right there um, and, and getting those guys to, to, to knock that out and make it difficult for a catch and then obviously fight for that, uh, that offensive rebound that led to a jump ball and we had the arrow. So. I'm good. Thank you, Matt. Carl? Yeah, Matt, just you, you've talked a little bit this season about maybe the lack of awareness sometimes your team has, but just to have the awareness to keep pumping the ball inside, and I'm right. sure you were urging them to do that, but for them yeah. to do that down the stretch, how much of a step is that for for this club? Yeah, it's great. You know, we just we were trying to run a lot of different action um, to get him a deep uh, post catch, and they were really holding down there. And so we were hoping through that that we'd get some good looks, too, from the perimeter. But, you know, we tried to run as much as we could where those post-ups were in the middle of the paint just to try to make it harder for them to double. When they went smaller, that, you know, that was, that was a concern of ours. You know, you know, can they pick and pop offensively and, and you know, and use some threes or drive us at that time? And, you know, that, that's definitely a concern. Uh, but, no, we were, we were trying to get him the basketball as much as possible and play through uh, before the last play, I believe you said something to Brandon Newman standing in the corner. Yes. I don't know if that was part of the play that was supposed to be run or what, but kind of what were you trying to relate to? Yeah. Him? Well, a lot of people that get back on defense late in games, you're accustomed to getting back on defense. And obviously with six seconds, there's nothing to get back on defense about. And so I was just – I was kind of explaining to him where I thought this shot was going to come from. There was two places where it could come from. Yeah. And what I was telling him wasn't where the shot came from. That was the other option because when you shoot a short shot, you're going to miss short and you shoot long shots. So if it would have ended up into a long shot, I was explaining to him, just don't run into the rim. Just pause for a second, try to pick up the flight of the ball and get opposite and, and try to pick up the, you know, that long rebound. And so I don't know if he listened to me or actually digested it, but it was what I was talking to him about. I thought you were running the play for him. That's why you were no, talking. No, he was out of the play. <laughs> All right. And you, you did talk about Travion's free throws, but here's a guy that's put in a lot of work at the free throw line, and to see him step up and keep your team within one possession in, in those final seconds, what kind of boost can this be for him just to be able to step to the line and do that? Yeah, no question. It's uh, Hopefully you know, the confidence of, of making them, is one thing, but the confidence of making them down the stretch is another. You know, each one of them mattered. Obviously, that last one that he missed, um, you know, it, it's tough, man. It's it's a tough situation, and uh, hopefully he can build off of it and, and just keep feel, uh, feeling good. But he's put some time in. Coach Lutz has, you know, really worked with him on his free throws and his concentration and just not getting through it. A lot of times when guys struggle at something, you know, you want to ignore it or get away from it or get through it um, because, you're you know, you're not very good at it. When in reality, you know, he could shoot 75% from the line. He just has to keep plugging and keep working. And But, no, it's, it's good that he, you know, obviously knocks some down. And he Hopefully he can build some confidence. Just a quick one. Just uh, what Jaden did for you there in the first half to kind of give you some give you some baskets and give you a little bit of offense there. Yeah, it was great because, you know, you needed the way they were, you know, pressuring us with some of the things. We, you know, he was able to attack and get to the, get to the basket and uh, – you know, make a couple of layups at the rim. So uh, I thought he did some good things. You know, it's, it's a couple of those guys there. I thought Isaiah did some good things. I thought he did some good things. Um, but, yeah, it was, uh, it was a good game, you know, for the guys off the bench. Um, and a lot of times it's they play through their scoring so much, and Jaden's that way. Jaden's like every other good scoring guard you've ever had. Like, they, you know, if they score well, they think they play well. And I thought, like, even though he's three for nine and 0 for three for three, I thought he did some good things for us. And I think once you kind of see that and experience a great road win like that, you know, you just 
hopefully it can build confidence in other areas for him. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for Coach Painter? Yeah, I got one. Uh, Matt, can you just kind of talk about – does a play like that kind of propel you through a, a four-game road stretch? I know – it wasn't supposed to be a four-game road stretch, but it is now with the, the Nebraska game. So talk about that one play and how that can boost your team, I don't know, to, to, to going on a little run. Yeah, it was supposed to be four out of five. <laughs> so instead of a four-game road, you know, four out of five on the road, we get four straight. So, yeah, it, it's part of it. Like with everything that's going on this year, it's, you know, anybody that would complain, you know, you're, you're just – you're up against it. And, uh, you know, we've been pretty fortunate, actually. So we, we've been pretty fortunate in the situation we're in with everything in the pandemic. To, we haven't missed any practice time, zero practice time since the start of practice. And uh, but, yeah, being able to to win a game on the road versus a quality opponent like that's, you know, hopefully it'll help us, you know, you know, the rest of the year, you know, playing road games. Thanks. Yep. Hey, hey, Matt, can I get one in? Sure. Um, did you listen to the uh, Run DMC and the uh, public addresses uh, announcing it at all? I did. It's they played. It's tricky. I heard it. Yes. There you go. Uh, I like it. Um, seriously, though, uh, just give the backstory on the uh, pregame uh, sign of solidarity that both teams and uh, yeah. officials had. What message do you hope was sent by all of you? Yeah. Well, you know, Coach Izzo, you know, reached out to me before. And uh, I talked to our players after shoot around the day and they were all, for, you know, all for it. Just, you know, just the double standard, you know, more than anything. And just, you know, America needs to, to be able to see that, especially white America and, and see the double standard that, that's been going on for years. And, and now for that to happen, it just makes you sick to your stomach. And uh, but, you know, we need to get like anything, you know, we need to have great leaders and, we, you know, we need to have leadership right now in our country you know, across the board that, you know, that stands up and, uh, you know, sends the right message, but also from, you know, law enforcement, you know, you know, we, we not just have to make strides. We got to, if it's anything, they just, you know, you've got to start over and start over with, with people, what they understand and, and the world and treat everybody equal because it's, it's not been happening. And that was just another example of it. But um, I, you know, I appreciated him instigating that and saying that because obviously it's at Michigan State and you know the whole Michigan State community and their player support and obviously all of our staff and our players support it also because it was the right thing to do. Thank you. Good to see you. Good seeing you. They well, played they played it's tricky at um at Iowa too. Yeah that's uh I was very impressive that you uh had enough focus on the old school hip hop to uh, hear that. I appreciate no that. No doubt. Even though that's little, that gets a little bit commercial for Run DMC. That's not. That's like the number one. If you go like to any of those, you know, Rhapsody or whatever, it's the number one song that gets. But it's 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 not their best song. To me, it's not even like one of their top ten songs. Hard times actually would probably be more fitting. Hard times. That was the first song on the the Rockbox uh, album. That was the first one. Then it was Rockbox after that. So there might be like five to six songs off of that one that are better than it's tricky. It's not even close. You know, it's like that 30 days. It's, you know, it's not even remotely close. I, I don't understand. It's a good song, but it got a little commercial. And then that's, that's sometimes that's what happens. I don't want to say anything negative about my, my favorite, my favorite band, my favorite rap band, rap group, whatever you would call it. So. I don't know if you can see me smiling through my mask, but I love there it. You go. there you go. Good luck this season. See ya. All right. See ya. Thanks guys. Thank you, Matt.